Previously on Nama Factory, I had made substantial development into procuring the technology required to create the technology of ludicrous voltage. I left off with the invention of quantum circuits and the construction of the assembly line, which led to our first overly complicated recipe involving more than nine parts, which shall become common, because in today's gaming presentation, we shall be returning to Nomi Factory as if nothing had ever happened in the past year, to achieve our next goal, an extremely valuable material known as Nakwada. But before we embark on our mythological quest for Nakwada, it was time to draw inspiration from the wonders of outer space. Our current view from the station was a blend square that was occasionally blue and occasionally green, due to how close we were to Earth. And the sun was blocked by industrial nightmares above my head. These orientation issues can be corrected by inventing the space station altitude controller and orientation controller, which can change the view from the station by making it move through Euclidean space without the usage of any fuel. Everything was going according to plan. But then, everything went wrong. The station was accelerating away from Earth at breakneck speed, while simultaneously rotating around Earth at breakneck speed. These two facts combined made the station fly behind the Earth, causing it to be fake night time. I was now not able to see anything. But the other extreme, was when the station became sandwiched in between the Earth and the Sun. Theoretically I was receiving the full brunt of the Sun's radiation and solar flares, which should be destroying and exploding and incinerating this entire station, including me. But the view was beautiful. I now had enough motivation to begin the quest for Nakwada. Nakwada seemingly comes from Nakwada or. But Nakwada or does not generate in any world in any dimension. The only source of Nakwada or, were the Microverse mining missions. And the only tier of micro miner that was powerful enough to harvest Nakwada from the multiverse, were the tier 5 miners. What exactly were these made of? Signal material plating, miniature supercharged laser rays managed by ionic dargon gas blah blah blah. And not to mention 16 plutonium ingots worth of fuel for every single mission run by this minor. Notable mention. Miners do not return from multiverse mining missions. So I would have to reconstruct the entire tier 5 miner for every two stacks of Nakwada or I wanted to possess. In fact, the tier 5 miner was so expensive that I would have to build some tier 4 miners to mine moderate amounts of osmium and iridium to build the tier 5 minor. Because the tier 4 miner was based not only on overly complicated signalum plating, but also tungsten plating which can come from tier 2 miners. But did I really have to make tier 2 miners to make tier 4 miners to make tier 5 miners? The answer, is no. The alternate solution was extracting tungsten with a hint of platinum, from endstone. Here's how I used his insane trick. Due to my deep mob learning farm, I had a surplus of ender pearls and extraterrestrial matter byproducts, in the tens or even hundreds of thousands. Pearls. Matter and sandstone can then be crafted to transmute them into endstone. Step 2 was grinding endstone down into endstone dust. And guess what was inside endstone dust? Sand, a bit of tungstate, and a tiny bit of platinum. One notable mention of the notable mention is helium. These amounts may not seem much, but since I had practically infinite supplies of materials to craft endstone, I could eventually accumulate practically countably infinite amounts of endstone and therefore infinite helium, tungstate and platinum, all of which are needed for high tier industrial tasks, and all the sand from centrifuge and endstone can be infinitely recycled to return all of the sandstone to recreate endstone, so the only things consumed were pearls and matter. Now it was time to actually do the plan, I returned to one of the beaches located on the planet earth to excavate a large amount of sand to be combined into sandstone to kickstart the endstone chain, I would also need quite a few extreme voltage macerators, centrifuges, and packaging machines to combine the different sizes of dust into normal big dust. I would also need two mechanical crafters for the crafting tasks. Meanwhile in the material processing quadrant of the resource generation floor, I connected the new machines to the pre-existing tungsten processing power grid. In the first mechanical crafter, I automatically imported pearls and matter, 
with a starting amount of sandstone already allocated. This would unsurprisingly provide end stone. This leads into the extreme macerator to away trituration, which leads to the extreme centrifuge. The resulting sand is sent to the second mechanical crafter to recreate the sandstone which feeds back into the first crafter. All of the tungstate and platinum is packaged for usable uses. The platinum is stored in this long-term storage drawer, whereas the tungstate is fed into the hydrochloric acid chemical bath from an inordinately long time ago. Whatever left over helium was left over is then dumped into this super tank tier 5 capable of storing 32 million milliliters of any substance, which is necessary since I would be leaving this to run for eternity. With infinite tungsten dupe glitch, it was time to move on to phase 2 of step 5 of stage 1 of part 7 of getting Nakwada, making the tier 4 minor. The main purpose of this is to quote unquote, mine, iridosmine ores, which is basically free iridium. But it wasn't for free, even the action of crafting the miner was not free, because this needed a 7x7 crafting table, and a tier 2 microverse projector to handle more advanced multiversal mining missions, both of which needed a lot of things. The first thing I shall deal with is making not only the elite crafting table, but also the ultimate crafting table, made from black steel which I had, but also these T-square components which come in 5 tiers, all of which needed black steel. The moral of the story, is that I would need to auto craft quite a few black steel mixtures, to be blasted in the meantime. Anyways, the basic, advanced, elite and ultimate components were made from iron plates and nether quartz plates and glowstone sheets and electrum alloy plates and aluminum plates and sliced tender pearl sheets and uranium 235 in plate form and emeralds sliced into plate form. All of these were easy. All I had to do was combine these with a bunch of black steels here and there and everywhere to haphazardly spontaneously form the elite 7x7 crafting table. These could then be duplicated in a normal crafting table for some reason. But the crystal teen component, needed for the ultimate crafting table, needed those meridium and crystal teen materials. Two of the most expensive alloys that I had encountered so far. Those meridium needed to be mixed in at least ludicrous voltage deer mixer, and crystal team needed approximately 0.44 nether stars per ingot. Luckily, in the previous episode, I had excruciatingly created one of the things needed for a ludicrous air technology, the ludicrous motor. The second thing, was the ludicrous machine hull, made out of rhodium palladium lumium which I had 66% of. Rhodium and palladium came as a byproduct of extracting iridium from sheldonite, and I would have to manually make a bit more lumium like last time. Now all I had to do was combine it all together and smelt it in an argon environment at a very high temperature for a moderate period of time. This could then be bended and combined with polytrifluoroethylene and niobium titanium cables, for the ludicrous hull. The final new thing I needed for a ludicrous tier machinery, were quantum supercomputers, which counts as a ludicrous tier circuit, all just so I could make a mixer powerful enough to create O's meridium powder, a singular blender with the computing power of all the processing power on earth in 1984. But since I already had quantum circuits and quantum assemblies, the act of upgrading quantum assemblies to quantum supercomputers was rather simple needing a handful of RAM wafers and platinum wires, and I had infinite platinum from Menstone anyways. Anyways, I made an autocrafting pattern to order the system to make all the quantum supercomputers I pleased. So with a quantum supercomputer, rhodium palladium lumium, and ludicrous tier machinery, I could put together my elite mixer mark II. But I was foolish to think the pain would end there, because I would have to set up a ludicrous tear energy grid to feed energy to my new machine, which requires ludicrous tear signalum wire superconductors and ludicrous energy acceptors, which needed yet another ludicrous machine hull. In reality this was not painful to make, because the last time I made signalum and lumium, I anticipated I would need more in the future. So I made a gargantuan amount of leftovers to use in the future. And the future, had become now. Anyways, I mixed the osmiridium all according to plan. But while I was smelting this osmiridium, I had to deal with making crystal teen, a nightmarish compound of lapis, diamonds, 
iron, gold, diamonds, and nether star nuggets. My original supply of 31 nether stars from the wither incident had all run out, and I was certainly not going to repeat the semi mistakes of the past, if only there was a way to turn mana dust and blaze rods into nether stars. There was, by combining the four elemental fiery dusts together with quartz and the four elemental blaze rods with even more quartz and some luminescence, I could create the cardinal coordinate nether star shards and the star core, when pieced together like a lego puzzle, they unsurprisingly become, nether stars, my nether star shortage was suddenly gone, which meant it was time to create a confoundingly high amount of crystal teen ingots, aka about 16 of them, once this was done, and once those meridium bricks were in my hands, I turned all of them into the crystal team components. At last, after just 50 more steps, I could assemble the ultimate crafting table. With all three tiers of crafting tables in my possession, I was now able to craft all tiers of micro miners, from the tier 1 3x3 three three steel thingy, to the tier 10 9x9 nine nine neutronium plated universe harvester. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. I needed the tier 4 miner, since I already had signalum and tungsten. The next part of the miner I had to automate, were high voltage field generators, requiring the infamous superconductor known as mercury barium calcium cuprate. Allow me to explain, mercury comes from redstone, barium comes from processing quartz ore, calcium comes from a lot of things, and I have basically infinite copper. So if we do the math of combining this rather odd mix of worthless materials, I got a valuable superconductor. This was the main ingredient of the high voltage field generator, which I crafted an auto crafting recipe for. We were now officially 10% done with making the tier 4 miner, and I had no interest in manually making the other 90%. So, every other part needed for the miner will also be stored in an auto crafting recipe, since I would be needing way more than one of these. The only exception, were the 5x5 laser arrays, made from capacitor banks solidified argon, circuits and quartz, all smashed together on the fancy yellow big table. These big crafts could not be automated yet, but anyways it was time to automate everything I needed for the tier 4 spaceship. Behold, this conglomeration of signalum, tungsten, argon and superconductors, the so-called tier 4 miner, and just like all the other tiers of miners, this needed some sort of fuel, some quantum flux, and some data. Since the tier 4 miner had a reactant dynamo engine rather than a combustion engine, its fuel was thermal blaze dust rather than rocket fuel. Thankfully the dusts were leisurelier to fabricate than the one when dimethyl hydrazine fuel. Even 32 dusts was no big deal. I thought the tier 4 mission was ready to launch, but that was fake and false news, because unlike previous tiers of missions, I apparently needed some data to help guide the mission, specifically, with a realm data. And the realm data, originates from impossible realm data, which originates from extraterrestrial matter and solidified experience, which originates from extraterrestrial matter. If only I had hundreds of thousands of extraterrestrial matter sitting around due to months worth of deep mob learning loot piling up. As it turns out, I did. Now all I had to do was create a few high voltage machines to process this matter, using a fluid extractor. This matter can be juiced into this green plasma looking thing, which can be solidified into solidified experience. With this, and some more extraterrestrial matter, I could create the realm data. Now. The mission was finally ready to be started. 
But that was fake and false news. The Tier 4 mission could only run in a Tier 2 microverse projector. The main difference between this and my current measly cuboid projector was that this needed approximately 58.3% more of what it was currently made out of. More diamonds, more microversim, more circuits, more tempered glass, and more engine intake blocks. Now all I had to do was to go down to the microverse quadrant of the resource processing floor and manufacture the tier 2 projector ball on top of the original tier 1 ball. Finally, the mission could actually be started. No more delays, no more fake and false news. I put in the miner, the data, the fuel, and the quantum flux. And so, the mission was started. After several minutes of staring at my screen, I was made aware of the presence of some newers I had obtained. Os Meridium and Iris Dominors were now in my possession. This would give far more osmium and iridium than sheldonite, which was the original source of those materials. So with the tier 4 miner, I had enough stuff to make the tier 5 miner. However, I would not process these os meridium ores, until I upgraded my ore processing from this measly high voltage clutter, to my planned ultimate extreme giant insane voltage ore processing V2, which would extract double the materials from the same amount of ores, at a faster rate. But this would not be done yet due to the current task at hand. I had to come up with a way to autocraft using 5x5 five five tables. The molecular assembler was only able to do 3x3 three three processes. But automating these bigger crafts would be weird. They needed packagers, unpackagers, automatic large crafting tables, all of which I made. And how it works, is this. Using yet another custom crafting table. I could program big crafting recipes onto these fancier brown crafting recipe patterns, which held approximately 20 slots for different big crafts. These fancy recipe patterns could then be appointed to these unpackagers and packagers, which are connected to the matter energy system. This allows it to send super abundant amounts of items at once to the unpackagers to send to the automatic large crafting table, which will send forth the products to the packagers which basically tells the matter energy system that the recipe has been accomplished. Now that I could make patterns to auto craft large items, it was time to create patterns for the 5x5 laser array, and the 5x5 tier 4 miner. Now the tier 4 miners were completely 100% mass producible, it was time to move on to the tier 5 miner, which is our ticket to obtaining Naquata for our future industrial prospects. Unfortunately, this tier 5 thingy was a major leap in difficulty. Needing miniature fission reactors and extreme voltage tier field generators and Enderman souls for some reason. Here's how I shall deal with this idiosyncrasy. Platinum from end stone and uranium from the tier 1 missions can be smelted together for triplatinum uranium, which is the superconductor needed for this new extra extreme field generator. Leftover iterium barium cuprate and tungsten steel from the extremely ancient fission reactor incursions would be used to assemble the fission reactor. And more was easily makeable anyways from stockpiled rare earth and barite, which I forgot how to obtain. But that was not a problem for now. The major brick wall was the vibrant thruster, which needed prescient crystals which contains the soul of a lost enderman trapped within a vibrant crystal. All for my industrialization, the soul of an enderman can be obtained simply by stuffing enderman heads inside this jar. Why this was needed for a spaceship is unknown, but I do not care. After doing a bit of searching, it appears that enderman heads can be easily obtained by deep mob learning. So I went to the deep mob learning sector, and was surprised to find that basically everything had stopped working because it was clogged by pristine matter. For the first 3 milliseconds I had no idea how this even happened, but then I realized it was most likely because I forgot to activate the loot fabricators, which is necessary to consume the pristine matter to create resources. After several minutes of dealing with the disastrous consequences of temporarily having less than 180 IQ during a critical moment, I occupied a few of the empty simulation chambers with Enderman models, which would make pristine Enderman matter to be converted into Enderman heads. Using auto-crafting, I could automate turning the heads into trapped souls. Imbuing them inside crystals would require the self-explanatory soul binder, 
created from some tungsten steel, solarium, and one of each mob head. In other mod packs, these heads would have been an RNG circus to obtain on the overworld. But in Nomi Factory, the developers have blessed us with the ability to magically turn deep mob learning pristine matter into mob heads. So I exploited that to the best of my abilities. Now that I had the soul binder, I proceeded to set up automation for this. But then I realized that this needed XP, and as far as I know, this can only be done by manually clicking this button to extract experience from my in-game player body. But then, I remembered that approximately 6 minutes ago, I could obtain liquid experience by juicing extraterrestrial matter. What if, this liquid experience was sent to this liquid storage drum and connected to the matter energy system? so that the matter energy system could export experience to the soul binder. This miraculously worked, after a few seconds of weird demonic voices being heard in my walls, ceiling, floor, and four-dimensional space-time constraints. The prescient crystals were in my hand, so the only other thing I had to do was to make a processing pattern to automate this so I would never have to spend 8 seconds doing it myself again. And so, the vibrant thrusters were available. So naturally, the next thing to do, was to consume the product that I had just produced. This would be done, by making even more auto crafting patterns, for every part needed for the tier 5 miner. After a rather massive left clicking montage, I had done it. This monstrous conglomeration of precious metals, superconductors, trapped souls, and hundreds of notable mentions, was now in my hands. And as a reminder, every mission, also needed some data, fuel, and quantum flux. But since the tier 5 miner runs on nuclear fission, we will need some fission fuel. We could have used uranium like every other sane person. But this needs stabilized plutonium. I had anticipated this all along, a few episodes ago. I had created my nuclear reactor and uranium enrichment facilities, which I never mentioned again after that episode. But now, it was important again. In the meantime I had been stuffing hundreds of thorium and uranium fuel pellets in it to obtain depleted nuclear waste which could be centrifuged to obtain a few nuggets of plutonium here and there. So all I had to do, was to melt the plutonium and recast it into spherical stabilized plutonium. With this, my tier 5 miner, the quantum flux, and the advanced multiversal ball, I could run the Naquada retrieval mission, which worked. But then I got some other important resources I did not ask for, which is called Cubanite which is apparently the source of another fictional element named Trinium. Starting now, real materials will become less and less useful for our purposes. The age of science fiction no Agabugatek had unfortunately begun. However, I would not be processing these ores into actual materials yet. Due to how excruciatingly extortionate these ores were to obtain, I would need to get the most out of these precious stacks of ores. So in the next episode, I, I go by lots of names will be investigating methods of truly extreme ore processing, which will lead to extracting the most naquata possible out of these ores, which will be required, for my next big goal, the fusion reactor in Minecraft. And this concludes, episode 13 of this rather tolerable series.